Good morning, this is Chris Shoemaker, also known as Yehuda Ben Shomer, and you're listening to Coffee with Chris, the time of the day where we share a cup of coffee and share a bit of the Word of God. This is our fifth Sidra, our fifth Aliyah of this tour portion of Metot, which means tribes, taken from Numbers chapter 31, verses 42 through 54. And then this Thursday's Torah portion, this uh, Thursday Sidra, we are going to be talking about how no man is left behind. That is the motto of many fighting units out there, whether it's Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Royal Canadian, Mounted Police, or whatever fighting force or, or security force that you have, is we have made this vow that, that to the best of our ability, no man is left behind. And it's no less in regards to spiritual warfare. We're not going to leave any man behind. In Numbers chapter 31, verse 49, it says, They said to him, Your servants have counted the heads of the men of war under our command, and not one is missing. This last hurrah, this last battle that Moses led the children of Israel to take vengeance upon Midian for their deception and trying to bring them down through idol worship, they beat the Midianites and not one man was lost. Every man was brought back. They said to him, your servants have counted the heads of the men of war under our command and not one is missing. How fantastic and how miraculous is that? Not one casualty of war among the children of Israel. Every man returned. So in spiritual warfare, no man gets left behind. John 15, 13 says, Greater love has no man than this, than he laid down his life for his friends. If somebody has to be left behind, it should be you. We should be self-sacrificial. It's just like in physical warfare when a, when a guy jumps on a grenade in a foxhole to protect his buddies from getting blown up. He'd rather get blown up and see his buddies go home to his wife and kids and family. And he would rather sacrifice himself to see his buddies survive. We kind of need to do the same thing in spiritual warfare. When we see that 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 our uh, brothers and sisters in, in Messiah Yeshua are helpless and defenseless, and they're already beat down through the battle of spiritual warfare and the struggle, we need to stand in the gap for them. We need to jump in front of those aiming uh, fiery darts of the wicked that are that are that are shot, and we need to hold up our shield of faith and cover our brother and sister in the Lord. You know, um, we must have that Christ-like sacrificial love, because it says also in Galatians six two, bear one another's burdens, and in this way you fulfill the law of Messiah, the Torah of Messiah. So. Whenever we see somebody struggling or hurting that is a brother or sister in Christ, we need to do, pull out all the stops and do everything that we possibly can to help them out. Whether it's to, to weep with them, whether it's to laugh with them, whether it's to sit down and pray with them, whether it's to point out a passage of scripture that may give them solace or comfort or aid or help them in their, in their trial, trouble, tribulation, or battle, or maybe even a scripture passage that may help them get back on the right track after they've lost their way or they've strayed. We need to do everything that we can, and we've lost that concept here in this day and age. Everybody keeps to themselves. And you know, I, I know personally a very, very sad, sad story about a woman who was faithful to attend her church. She was faithful. She went every time the doors were open. But you know what? She got sick and she ended up being a shut in. Uh, she ended up, her mind ended up being compromised through, through illness and sickness and disease. And you know what? Not one person from that church gave her a phone call, sent her a card, or showed up to her door and says, hey, we miss you. Hey, we realize you can't come anymore because of your health issues, but we wanna let you know that we love you and that, that we care, that we're still concerned about your spiritual welfare, that you're still our sister in Christ, that you're still a part of this family, even though you physically can't be there. And you know, that's sad. What kind of message does that send? What kind of message did it send to her? What kind of message did it send to her family? And sadly, when this woman passed away, there was a big resentment on her children's part because it says, huh, they called her family, but yet they never visited her in her time of need. So let's not be guilty of that ourselves. When we see our brothers and sisters in Christ floundering and, and struggling, let's do all that we can to show that we love them and that we care for them. And you know what? We don't have to be Bible scholars and memorize a lot of verses. Sometimes just being there is enough. When Job was sick, his friends sat with him for seven days in silence. They didn't say a word. It was just comforting enough for them to be there to say, hey, we're here for you. So we need to do the exact same thing in our life. Uh, and, and if these people, uh, your brothers and sisters in Christ mean something to you, show it by your actions. 
actions speak louder than words. Guys, thanks so much for listening. Go out there and have a great day. Shalom and God bless.